Right, so I'll start with introducing myself. Um, so my name is uh, Detective Chief Inspector Ahmed Sareen. I'm from Western District. I'm currently relieving as officer in charge of Western District. Um, I'll make a brief statement about uh, significant seizure and the arrests we had. Um, the investigation is still ongoing, so um, you'll have to bear with me because there are only certain questions that I can answer about investigation. I will start with a statement and I'll open up to the floor after that so you can answer, ask any questions if you may have. Um, so Western District detectives, um, have, they have ongoing investigation in relation to manufacture and distribution of steroids. On Friday 9th of July, uh, we attended a business premises at 135 Port Road, Queenstown, and we located a large-scale clan lab, um, which is used, which was used to manufacture what we believe is steroids. Um, the setup was very sophisticated. It had uh, commercial pill press, commercial mixes, and um, uh, factory-style labeling and capping off bottles. We uh, discovered a large amount of white powder, which was some of them was packed other was unpacked. We discovered a large amount of vials, uh, some packed and unpacked. They were all seized. We believe that these steroids are distributing, distributed across Australia. Um, due to the large commercial setup and the extent um, of the sophisticated facility, it took us three days to dismantle the lab and um, seize the exhibits. Um, we see, sought the assistant, uh, assistance of our friends from Drug and Organised Task Force, Crime Task Force. On Friday, we arrested three men, a 45-year-old from Modbury North, a 65-year-old from Royal Park, and a 40-year-old from Mawson Lakes. And they were charged with the offences of manufacturing prescription drug and possession of prescribed equipment. Their police bail was refused and they will appear in Port Adelaide Magistrate Court today. As a result of this ongoing investigation on Sunday, we searched the home address of the 45-year-old Modbury Northman, and we located a small domestic lab which is used to extract cannabis oil and a firearm. The 45-year-old from Modbury North was further charged with manufacture of controlled drug and firearm-related offences, including possession of firearm without a licence. Um, at this stage, we have a sample of what we had um, in the premises. It's a very small sample. Uh, we are still counting and we're still going through what exactly we have seized. Um, so I don't have exact number and value for you at this stage. As I said, this is an ongoing investigation. Um, we are working very closely with serious organised crime branch and further arrest or charges are not discounted at this stage. This seizure and this investigation is as a result of some valuable information that we received uh, from the community. I'm not in a position to advise how and the method of receiving this information, but I would like to highlight that some sometimes small information can lead to significant seizures like we have here today. So. We encourage the community, if they see anything suspicious, to contact us on 1-800-333-000 and they can remain anonymous. I open, I'm open to questions now. Uh, um, a bit, <coughs> in terms of the scale of this operation, in your media release you've said around 500 or more than 500,000 pills, 100 kilos of um, liquid and also powdered form of steroids. Can you talk to me about the scale of this, put this into context for people at home, just how big was this operation and, and its, its scope and its, um, yeah, its scale across Australia? Yeah. Put it into some context for people. Yeah. So initially thought 500,000 pills or approximate thereabouts, but the counting is ongoing and we think it's way more than five, 500,000. Um, as I said, we are still counting and if you look at the packet of pills next to you, um, this is the enormous task that we have to go through of counting it and then analysing whether it's drugs or not. So it's very difficult for me to say exactly what we've got at the moment, 
But from the pictures that, that we released to yourself uh, through our media section, you'll see that we have a large amount. And, how, and you've already seen yesterday in the media the photos of uh, the pill press. Um, so it's, it's pretty big. It's, uh, it's industrial style, uh, factory style manufacturing. How long do you think it'll take to go through everything? Oh, it's uh, very difficult. To um, this is an ongoing investigation. You know, um, going through with the exact numbers, um, I can't say the timeline, but we, we need to have resources dedicated to do that. Um, when saying that, we will be working closely with serious organized crime branch to see if there are other offenses and other players in this, um, and this investigation will be ongoing. Can you talk to me about the, the organisation of, of this? Do you believe that this has links to organised crime? Um, and how long has this been going on for this particular operation? Um, at this stage, we can't, I can't neither discount nor confirm that this is connected to any organised crime. And that's why it is, it is essential that we conduct further investigation to a certain where this leads, leads to. Uh, at this stage, we, we only know of these three players who have been arrested, but we are following up further leads, which may lead to other arrests or charges. How, how long has this been going on for, this particular operation, this drug lab? When was it set up and, and how long has it been in operation? Oh, I don't have that information that how, how long it was set up, but from what we, what we can see in the photos, it seems like it has been ongoing for quite some time because the product or the powder that was coming out of the machines it was on the machine, as you see on the photos, and it was on the walls of the premises. So it's difficult to estimate the exact time, but it seems like it has been established for quite some time. I know you said you can't go into specifics as of yet, but do you have a rough estimate that you're working with at the moment of the street value of you know, 500,000 plus? Yeah, uh, and this is where um, it's very difficult for me to say what we have, so I can't put a street value on the things and the, the estimates I don't know. Um, if I was to say any value here, I think it will be my imagination or my belief, and which will be which could be completely wrong. So I'm very aware of not saying the value because, yeah, I seriously don't have any idea how big it can be. Well, what is a more valuable seizure? Is it the actual illegal substances, or is it the machinery mm -hmm. used to create it? I mean, the, the, as you said, this is a very sophisticated setup. Yeah. What has been more valuable, or, or a, a bigger bust? Yeah, I think it's both of them. Um, well, the machineries they seem expensive to me. I'm not a, I'm not a mechanical person myself. Um, but the way they are, they did seem uh, expensive, and the amount of uh, powder, the stuff, and the liquid stuff we've got, uh, that that is quite a bit as well. So I would say both of them are expensive. Do, yeah. Does does this have the capability a, a lab like that to um, be used to manufacture other types of illegal drugs? Um, as I said, I'm not a chemist, I'm only a police officer, so yes, potentially, but at this stage we didn't find any other drugs in those premises. In terms of the manufacture of steroids, uh, you know, we don't hear about it too much, steroids in the media. Is this quite significant in you saying that this could potentially be supplied to the whole country? So is this one of the biggest, do you think, drug labs for steroids yeah. in the country, potentially? Uh, it's definitely the bigger one I have seen in my time whilst I've been a detective. Uh, whether it's the biggest one in the country, very difficult for me to answer that. Uh, but it is big, uh, and it is the bigger one, biggest one I have seen so far. Is there evidence that there was, you know, sale in other states? Um, there is some evidence to link that it could have been uh, distributed across Australia. Uh, we're still working through the leads. So you don't know what states as yet? Um, no, we don't. No, we're still working through that. Um, can you talk to me about uh, what was this this lab on the front? Um, it looked like it was a vacant business. Or yes, yes. It looked like it was a commercial property that was being used. <coughs> what was it purporting to be? I mean, what had Dace told neighbours that was happening inside? See, I, I can't answer that. I don't have that information. Um, that what they told neighbours it was. And I only know what was reported in the media by yourself yesterday about those premises. Um, all we know is uh, once we received information from the community that um, there was some activity in the supply and distribution of steroids, we started working on it and we swiftly got these premises. So when, when officers um, forced entry into the premises, what was their reaction? Was it a surprise when they saw what was inside? What was the reaction from police? Yeah. Um, um, I haven't spoken to them, but if I was to enter such premises, I, I would be surprised too. 
because we don't expect going into the premises with that amount of steroids being manufactured and with that kind of setup. So was this being used not only as um, a laboratory, but was it also being used as a storage facility as well? Yeah, there was, there was quite a few packed items, um, which we believe were ready to be shipped out. Yes, you can say that it was being used as a facility, storage facility as well, to a certain extent. Do you have a message to the community or community members <coughs> potentially manufacturing in drugs or thinking about starting to do so? Yeah, the message is simple. Um, and we rely on a lot of community inf information coming out of the community. That's why I've urged people to, uh, if they see anything suspicious, any suspicious behaviour, to call us on one 800 0 um, It may be a small piece of information for yourself, and you may not think much of it, but it could be a big uh, piece of puzzle for us, and it could help us solve crime and lead to sig significant seizures like this. And for persons manufacturing drugs, um, you can see what has happened. Um, SAPO is committed to, uh, to drive this kind of behaviour down and we'll keep working towards um, uh, seizing and uh, confiscating these things and apprehending the culprits. Can you, uh, the chemicals that were inside, obviously they, they were dangerous. Uh, police were in hazmat suits, MFS were called. Um, can you talk to me about the nature of some of the chemicals and how dangerous they were? So once we, when we, as police officers, when we deal with unknown substances, if you're not sure, we'll play safe and we will wear uh, protective equipment, as you saw. Um, and so there were chemicals. Uh, we are not expert in the field of chemicals um, and that's what we called MFS yesterday.